Thank you for joining us again. This is Business Nigeria. Let's get into our second conversation now. Amid the backdrop of the global microeconomic instability and the proliferation of illicit activities in the market, the Nigerian capital market successfully pulled through with the stock market being ranked among the best performing in the first half of 2022, despite uncertainties in the Nigerian economy, such as uh, political risks, inaccessibility of foreign exchange, challenging operating environment, and other global trends that have resulted in an unprecedented exit of foreign portfolio investment in the capital market. Domestic investors are trading activities in the market as of June 2022 recorded a transaction worth of 1.4 trillion naira, while international investor trading activities was pegged at 243.5 billion naira. But joining me live virtually as we take stock of the performance of the Nigerian capital market amid burning global economic issues is an investment banker and stockbroker, Mr. Mokta Mohammed. Mr. Mokta, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to speak with us here on Business Nigeria at this time. Good it's to have pleasure. you back in the, in, in the country. Just before we turn to issues around the, uh, the economies of the world and other global issues, the Queen of England, the Queen Elizabeth II, has only just passed away yesterday. Uh, talk to us from that window and perspective as to how all of this is going to play out. We do have um, uh, a new king, uh, uh, King Charles III, how will that play out in the markets? How will that play out in the economies of the United Kingdom and economies all around the world? Thank you. It's always good to be back. Um, well, if, if, if you go about the, the thing that is um, it's a great loss to the UK economy and to the global market also because of the kind of stability she brings in. There's, uh, there's a saying that says the queen uh, does not explain herself, neither does she argue. So definitely, um, she has brought a lot of peace. She's she's been the, the stabilizer of the of, of 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 the British economy, especially, and also in the eurozone, she's played a very high, especially in the Commonwealth. So um, you you could see the, the the impact of that in terms of economic activities are on standstill in the United Kingdom at the moment. Um, even the greatest um, uh, football league in in in, in the in, in the world, with the British players and the Premier League and all, are, 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 have been suspended for this week. And so we we, we see that also playing out in 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 the economic space, also in terms of um, the, the 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 rates between the euro and other currencies, the pounds and other currency of the world. You see that the pounds is trading low. Now the good thing the good thing about Queen Elizabeth was she was um, greatly admired by the people globally. She was somebody that um, even if people have some reservation about her policies or about the way the royal family uh, re uh, especially respond or react to issues, she was more or less of like like a, group, a, a, a global peace um, um, stabilizer. So, but when you look at the current king, King Charles III, you know he's he's a show with a lot of controversies. And like uh, if you meet the average British man, he's saying that look, this is just a stopgap measure for the real king and uh, queen to come in at the appropriate time, which they think the people's king will be Prince um, William. So uh, uh, if you look at that by and by the economy, then you you know that um, it, it will take a lot for, 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 king, for king Charles to gain the popularity of the people because of a lot of issues that's happened before now. Yes, uh, and speaking about some of the changes that, of course, would take place, are already even taking place, um, is the fact that the currency would now have the face of the king, long live the king, King Charles III. I, I wonder what that perhaps would do for the pounds as compared to other currencies around the world, the yen, uh, the euros, the dollars, the US dollars, the Canadian dollars. Yeah, at this morning, the pound is already trading at, um, I mean, it's trading at all time low since 1985 to the euro, to the US dollar, and also to the, to the, to the euro. And also to the, um, uh, um, or the to the yen, so it's it's expected. And again, when you, when you see that thing, that thing is com going to come up with a lot of uh, economic implication and cost in terms of uh, reversing all of this currency. But it's not something that will be done um, at a go. So it will, it will be phased out gradually. And so it's, it's it's a long process that is going to affect them economically. And you mustn't forget that just um, yesterday, the the new prime minister was also ruling out a. Uh, economic policy as regard um, energy 
and which said that um, U.S. Uh, most of the U.K. family will be will be will paying two thousand five hundred pounds per year. The government will be doing that for them. I mean, the government will subsidize that, so they will have to pay just two thousand five hundred pounds and make sure his household have the savings of uh, one thousand pounds. So, and that again is uh, a, a major driver because again it's going to fuel inflation, which they already governing the, the worst inflation in the history of the of the United Kingdom economy. So. Um, all these with what is happening now is not is it's not really going to work in in their favor in the short term. But again, when we see those policies, we begin to see what are the long term implications of those policies via and via how 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 the people tend to receive um, the new king, especially in terms of policy, in terms of perception, and if it will be accepted globally, just like Queen Elizabeth was. Then if she if he does that, then. Um, go see the, the UK economy turn around. But it's going to be a very tough time for them because already they're already going through tough times in, in their economy. And the retail sector in, 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 in the UK, which have, was probably to be the greatest mover in terms of job, in terms of um, even in the equity, in their equity market, seems to be trading low at this moment, even since the beginning of this week because of high energy costs and a lot of inflationary, inflationary growth that has to do with high energy costs and also production costs. So, there's a lot um, they need to do to, to change the tide. Amy, why, why we stay with the queen, her reign, her life, her legacy, just how much impact will that also make here in Nigeria and perhaps the continent? I want us to perhaps narrow our conversation uh, down to Nigeria. I mean, uh, she, was, she's, she was the head of 14 governments, 36 Commonwealth nations of the world, she was revered here in Nigeria and the continent and all around the world. But speaking directly to us uh, back home, uh, how does that affect and impact us, her departure, her absence? Well, the president said it, that the history of that President Muhammad Buhari said it through his um, 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 uh, press release that um, the history of modern day Nigeria is not complete without the queen. And, and so, uh, in terms of impact, I, I, I don't see in, in terms of economic impact, uh, I don't see so much um, affecting us because uh, if you look at our trading between us and the British and the involvement of the Queen, it has not been um, that so involved. And no, remember that she is just a ceremonial uh, head of state of all the Commonwealth nations. So, in terms of that, I think in terms of going forward, when we talk about peace uh, in the region, that is mm. where we, 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 we see the impact of Queen Elizabeth because even until his last moment in the throne, she tried to intervene in a lot of, uh, resolving a lot of crises within Africa, and also especially Nigeria now that we are going through um, security challenges. Our wisdom, our terms of how to address issues would have been to our advantage. But when you look at economically, have we really done so much business with, with, with the UK? I don't think so. Well, Mokta, we, we have to, well, perhaps discuss other issues that concerns us, but of course, uh, this is a big loss. Uh, she will be missed uh, at 96. She passed at 96. She was on the throne for 70 years. Uh, she only ascended the throne in 1952 when she was only 25 years old. Uh, we, we have to also get used to referring to the head of the monarchical uh, leadership or hierarchy now as a king. We have always been used to the queen, but we have to get used to King Charles III now. But, but let's, let's, let's bring the conversation back home uh, and get to see how we can discuss issues around our, 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 our stock exchange here in Nigeria, for instance, I mean, surprisingly, uh, the Nigerian capital market pulled through with the stock market being ranked among the best performing in the first half of 2022. Does this come to you as a surprise? Yeah, um, definitely yes and no. Yes, in the fact that uh, with the global economic crisis that we are experiencing all over the world, especially in terms of uh, inflation. Nigeria also has the volatility of our exchange rate. We just, like you said in your introduction, we are not seeing the foreign investors coming in, either portfolio investors or foreign direct investors coming into our market. We've seen our Naira exchange to the dollar going to an all-time high. So we, we, the, a lot of inflation is at an all-time high since, um, since um, 2009. And so it's um, it, when you look at that, but when you look at... Um, what are the price, the price of our equities? When you look at the figures, uh, most of our equities are selling at uh, a premium, especially when you look at the, 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 the those in the banking sector with the type of expansion they've done uh, in Africa and the type of profit and terms of dividend payout they pay. They seems to be one of the best dividend paying out companies in the world. 
So you 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 won't be surprised at the market. And again, um, you will see it, like you said also in your report, it's been driven mostly by local investors and local institutional investors are beginning to see value, especially when you look at other investment vehicles in the in, in Nigeria that are the returns are very low, comparable to what you get in terms of dividend yield and capital appreciation in the capital market. You won't be too surprised. I think basically, and the numbers that have been coming in, even the half-year numbers that have come in thus far have been very, very impressive. So uh, like I always say, the market uh, always have a life of its own, sometimes different from the economy. But in the long run, the economy uh, tends to play a larger part in determining the direction of the market. But in the short term, the market seems to take a life of its own when it begins to come out with those figures. But um, if we are not addressing those in, uh, economic issues, uh, within the shortest possible time, then we'll begin to see those um, uh, 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 economic issues begin to affect the market. But for now, I think um, we are enjoying those rally because of the price of our uh, of our equity, um, P, the P/E ratios of some of our equity are the lowest in the world. So I, I'm not so in that area. I'm not surprised. But when you look at um, global economic trend, then you're surprised why we are the, the leading stock um, market in the world. Mr. Mohammed, can I, can I also ask you perhaps to do a, a direct comparison between these two global issues, the COVID-19 pandemic and, of course, uh, the invasion of Ukraine by, by Russia. President, uh, uh, President Vladimir Putin was, of course, led that attack. Which of these two events have had perhaps a more devastating impact on our, our capital markets? I think the invasion has had more devastating impact on our capital market. Uh, Remember that the COVID-19 pandemic was a global issue and Nigerians were able, Nigerian government were able to tackle that. It was an issue that has to do with um, all economy all over the world was shut at that time. And also we, we, we were able to handle in terms of um, uh, uh, handle our uh, health challenges within within lost a lot of life. This period we were able to, the government came up with a proactive ways and, and again, when the vaccine came, we're very receptive to taking the vaccine, even if uh, it's not commensurable with our population. But when you look at the, the, the current um, um, crisis that the invasion of Ukraine has done, it has wiped out all the gains that we have gained um, post-COVID. And so what we are, what we are seeing now is um, high energy costs, especially to Nigeria, that has affected our foreign reserve because um, the cost of refined petroleum product, because we are still refining about 90% of our, our, in short, almost 100% if you go by what the uh, NMPC Group Managing Director said, that uh, most of our refinery has not even been able to, to do even 1% 1, 1 uh, refined petroleum product. So, and that brings, that means that thus far the NMPC, which is the cash cow of the Nigerian economy, have not been able to remit anything to the Federation account. Uh, so when you look at that, again, you look at inflation, and again, with this inflation came, we have three types of inflation attacking us at the same time, and production inflation, market de de demand inflation, and also economic demand inflation all coming into play in our market at this time. Mm -hmm. These are all attributed to the to the uh, Russia invasion of um, Ukraine. The cost of wheat also have gone up. That has also in increase the cost of bread in Nigeria, which happens to be one of the uh, easiest uh, uh, food items of the ordinary Nigeria. So when you look at that by and by the, um, the, uh, the COVID pandemic, you seem to say that um, the Ukraine crisis has affected us more. And in terms of the equity market, unfortunately, unfortunately, we were, we were supposed to be seeing gain in the capital market, especially when you with the oil and gas sector. But the only gain we've seen in those sectors is inside plat alone that we're able to because they are old, they are the only company that is fully uh, 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 listed. I mean, fully bought their production, they are listed, and their marketing marketing arm also listed. For other oil companies, uh, they just their 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 they marketing arm, their downstream that that is listed in, in the in 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 and in, uh, in the uh, equity market. And so what, what you see about that, you know that we have the challenge of um, subsidy uh, coming in. Most of them have not been importing petroleum products. So we are not seeing those gain, exception or setback. And one though that was wholly listed also have its own internal crisis. Uh, if you look at that compared to a company, a wholly listed company like the Saudi energy company, with, which, 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 which generated its highest gain, Ever so, and or even if you look at the global market, also the U.S. market, the U.K. market, the Euro, Euro European market, you realize that the energy and gas sector seems to drive the market. But in our own case, it's different, and because of uh, the the high cost of uh, uh, um, not the high cost of energy, 
a subsidy payment from the government. So it has not impacted in the down in, 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 in the bottom line of these companies. And so other companies like the consumer sectors and other sectors are also gobbling with inflation. The banking sectors are also gobbling rate hike and also gobbling with non-performing loans that are increasing because of the slow nature of the economy. So um, if you look at that, you realize that um, the, 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 the crisis in Ukraine has hit Nigeria more than the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic. And I remember that uh, during, the, during COVID, uh, there were talks about uh, um, dollar scarcity. There were also talks about foreign players exiting our, our markets. But can, can I also ask you, can our stock markets find financial strength with um, only players from domestic, uh, from, uh, from, from here, from domestic investors? Can, can we find financial strength and capacity uh, with investments only from uh, domestic players? Evidently, we are not finding that. That's why you don't see the kind of bullish runs that we normally experience uh, when we were in the market, if we have the foreign investors in there, because most of the investors that we have now are short-term investors, uh, especially those indigenous investors. Um, most of them used to be the investors that play this, the, 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 the treasury bill space, the fixed income space, um, the bond space. So most of them, and the, those are done for 90 days, when we want 180 days, the highest you get is 364 days. So. What we are seeing, yeah, we are seeing short-term players. So what we see in the market, you see the, the bullish run for a week or a month, and then after that, you see it retire because most of them take up to come take in profits and also look for a good entry point. Some of them will take in the profit and even enter into the fixed income space for the next um, for the next 90 days, then looking at the returns they get there comes into the market. So we have short-term players, and, and like I always say, the, the, the stock market is not a sprint, it's a is it's a marathon. And so when you don't have a lot of people running the marathon, then you see a lot of uh, liquidity um, uh, challenges in the market. And uh, also that is why the, the, the real result that comes in are not always very impactful. Mm -hmm. um, you look at is an equity like Zenith Bank, despite the good results, we are not seeing the impact in terms of price. We also look at um, UB also came out with their result yesterday. We are not seeing those impact because they are all we have are short term players. So generally, it does not really, really uh, help the equity market in terms of those bullish runs that we used to see when we have foreign investors coming to the market. Yeah. And perhaps maybe as we begin to wind down on our conversation with you, Mr. Mohammed, uh, perhaps you may need to do an analysis of uh, trading activities for this week. It's the close of the week, Friday. Um, I, I wonder what stands out for you in the market this week. I think what stands out for me in the market this week is the results that we have seen, especially from the banking sector and our um, Fidelity Bank for the first time paying an interim dividend of 10 Kobo and selling at 3 Naira, uh, 3, 3 Naira 50 Kobo at the time. That I mean, 3 Naira 30 Kobo at the time that result was released, it has moved to 3 Naira 68, so I mean, 64 Kobo. Me, that for me, that was the standout in terms of um, saying that, but and also the news that is also acquiring the Union Bank uh, foreign subsidiary in the UK, also. That's one news that stand out for me, and also. Yeah, like I said, the result that came out from um, UBA also seems to stand out. But for me, I think one standout event of the week was the result from Fidelity Bank in terms of the payment of an uh, interim dividend. And uh, that means that that bank is itching towards uh, becoming a tier one bank with a type of um, profit, with a type of market uh, second that they are gaining, especially in the retail space, especially also in the Southeast. They seems to be the king of that area. So for me, that was one thing that, that one my market news that really stand out through mm. through the week mm. and we are closing at a positive the positive region or zone at 0.09 percent i wonder what your expectations are for, for and projections of of course for uh, the new week for the new week, i i i tend to say we'll see we'll still see some of the especially we're still expecting results from access access um, corporation uh, the holding company of access bank we're expecting results is the first time the result the half year is as an holding company so we want to see how that result will be and also uh, we we'll also see other results from other tier uh, tier two banks also and um, bringing out their result and also we mustn't forget that and also have to see half year result from some of these um clung conglomerate also and so for me i think uh, next week is going to be a week that the result is going to tell the, the direction of the market in the short term, because uh, when those results come in, Nigerian investors, what they do is that when you start having those positive results, they begin to look towards the year end. Uh, we are already drafting into the third quarter already. And so by December, we are all in the year end. So they begin to, at that 
that, that view of how much um, in terms of in terms of capital precision and dividend yield they will get from the market if they enter the market at the when those results are out or after the markdown. So for me, next week is going to keep because a lot of um, equities will be marked down. We will see um, 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 Zenit Bank was marked down just um, on Tuesday, and they will be paying dividend their dividend payment on Tuesday, and that might inject a little bit liquidity into the market because uh, most investors might be bringing in some of the dividend back into the market. And we saw we will see dividend payout also from UBA. Also, UBA will be closing. Um, will be also be marking down next week. Also, um, Guaranteed Trust Bank and co holding company also will be Gitco will also be marked down for dividend payment. Also, who, 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 for me, what will stand out next week is the marking down and look at the price and what investors may see a bargain hunting in most of this um, equity after their markdown, after their declaration of interim dividends. Well, you sound optimistic, and of course, uh, we always need to sound that, you know, that way, <laughs> sound positive about the market. And we hope that indeed the trading activities will be in the positive region uh, next week. Well, thank you so much indeed for your valuable insights, uh, Mr. Mokta Mohammed, investment banker and stockbroker. Thank you indeed for your time on the program. Always a pleasure. Thank you. God bless.